ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೆ ಸಂಜಯ್ ಕೆ ದ್ವಿವೇದಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಟಿ ಓ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಕೊಲೀಗ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫೀಸರ್ಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ಡೀನ್ಸ್ ಝೋನಲ್ ಹೆಡ್ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ a very good afternoon to panta and a happy welcome just i want to have a small mention here and uh, i take this opportunity to share a few words of our pg research at dr v y sir h u and its accomplishments Vaisar Horticulture University has become a national flagship research lead university with a mission to foster an environment for excellence in professional education and ensure active participation of postgraduate students in the fields of horticulture thereby attempting to strike out the fine balance between need based research and quality Vaisar HU has been in the forefront in developing cutting edge technologies to cater the needs of the farmers the university has also bagged three consecutive times highest grf and srf scholarships and with the initiative and guidance of our honorable vice chancellor sir the pg research is being conducted in collaboration with various icr institutes uh, like ccr nagpur ihr iisr nrc banana iivr varanasi iiopr dfr in many cutting edge technologies and also under the frontier research initiation on utilization of drones in horticulture has also been done under the able guidance and directions of our honorable vice chancellor sir the postgraduate pg research also have been awarded with patents and few are in process of being patented the pg research outcomes are patented under the guidance and direction of our honorable vice chancellor sir i would also thank our honorable vice chancellor sir who has always been constant guidance and always extended support in directing the pg research into the right direction under this series only the university with the with the motivation and under the guidance of our honorable vice chancellor sir uh, it was decided uh, to launch a decision was taken to launch a program of mentoring of young minds and with a with a series of webinars to keep the faculty and students up to the date on the latest technological advancements for updating the law, knowledge and also for uh, mentoring the uh, students mentoring young minds in rewarding experience that goes beyond just imparting knowledge and uh, also for uh, guiding and supporting the young individuals as they navigate through their uh, personal and prof uh, professional growth so um, with this sir uh, now i also take this opportunity just before starting this to introduce our guest speaker uh, who has uh, given us time uh, and for the, the first series first uh, first lecture of uh, guiding our students uh, or mentoring our students uh, uh, in this uh, uh, series with uh, and uh, navigating the path pathways of research publications in scopus index journals and also uh, providing us uh, information about uh, uh, the other the information of indian society and horticulture research development for the benefit of students and um, at this uh, uh, before starting this i would also i would like to uh, give a brief uh, introduction of our uh, guest speaker who has given his um, uh in his time uh, who is a versatile personality and we know him in um, and his contributions of in horticulture also are known uh, just to start with i want to present uh, uh, dr uh, sanjay k dwivedi sir uh, presently is a scientist g and as it is a director dop directorate of personal defense research and development organization and he, uh, he has obtained his msc horticulture from uh, university of agriculture kumarganj ayodhya and phd in jb pant university he, with his 28 years he has 28 years of research and techno managerial administrative experience in the fields of horticulture uh, and he has extensively studied the himalayan and trans himalayan regions from high altitude and cold arid ladakh in western himalayas to uttarakhand in central himalayas and assam arunachal pradesh eastern himalayas his area of work has been genetic diversity and future crops propagation con conservation and processing value addition 
product development, patenting, and commercialization. He has been on forefront for development and popularization of low-cost protection cultivation technologies and soilless culture for adverse climatic conditions of Himalayas. He has worked on crops, minor and underutilized crops like apricot, sea buckthorn, uh, quinoa, and many other underutilized crops having medicinal and nutraceutical properties. Technologies, technology developed and patented on products of wild utilized, uh, un wild underutilized fruits of uh, sea buckthorn have been commercialized and resulted in development of agro processing industry, utilization of waste resource creation of jobs in remote parts of Himalayas. Similarly, low-cost polyhost technology for improving the livelihood of farmers in the hilly regions has yielded benefit to the farmer community. Dr. S.K. Divedi ji also has experience in technical human resource management. Divedi ji, sir, has served at uh, Dihar, Diadio Lay as scientist, Deepar Diadio, Halwani Uttarakhand as officiating director and DRL, DRDO Tejpur as director before joining DRDO headquarters New Delhi as director DOP. He has received several prestigious efforts like DRDO Young Scientist Award, ISHRD Himadri Young Scientist Award, ICR Faruke Ali Ahmad Award, SAI Scientist of Year Award, DRDO Laboratory Scientist of Year Award, DRDO Technology Group Award, Fellow of many professional societies, and also a number of over 10 professional societies and boards, and is in the executive of four societies and editorial boards as Editor-in-Chief of Progressive Horticulture Journal. And he has also an experience of organizing many national and state-level events, seminars, symposia, workshops, and he has to his credit nine patents and three commercially available products to his credit besides edited and authored four books, 16 monographs, technical bulletins, over 120 peer-reviewed research papers, and number of technical and popular articles. He has conceptualized and successfully organized many scientific and academic events at state and national level, and also participated in international events and visited institutions in Canada, USA, Korea, Japan, Turkey. He's also invited lead speaker and examination panel member for many seminars, conferences, institutions, universities, and IIMs. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, giving us time and uh, uh, giving us the first mentoring lecture uh, in this series of mentoring our young minds. Uh, as uh, at this juncture, juncture, it is very much uh, uh, required. <clears throat> so, uh, thank you very much, sir. And uh, with this. Uh, um, I request uh, uh, the uh, request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, will, uh, who is the chairman of today's uh, um, meeting, will uh, to kindly address his uh, presidential address. of the chair, uh, I request uh, uh, Dr. Sanjay Vivedi, sir, to kindly start his lecture and our uh, president and chairman of today's function, he'll uh, join us, sir. So with the permission of the chair, I request you to kindly start your lecture. Thank you, ma'am. Hope I am audible to all of you. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. At the outset, I would like to express my gratitude yes. and thanks to Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. T. Janki Ram Saab and the Dean Dr. Surya Kumari Ma'am for giving me this opportunity and wonderful opportunity, I will say, 
it's a really really very novel thought and unique thought in my opinion to having started this uh, mentoring young mind and this kind of uh, initiative is required in our academic and research institutions and we have to go out of box and we have to start new things how not only the knowledge but along with the knowledge your skill is more important and skill is the only thing when you can do some work only knowledge will not serve the purpose along with the knowledge and skill the personality development and attitude development is of the prime importance how you behave how you conduct how you interact how you speak how you sit how you dress up these are the other aspect of your personality which students should nurture at very beginning and most of the our indian institutions we are lacking in this area so once again i am grateful to the ysr ysr horticulture university and their authorities especially dr t jankiram and dr dr surya dean for giving me this opportunity and share my ideas on this aspect in fact you know these are a very i wanted to share my screen and i don't know whether it is available on your screen or not yes it has come yes sir yes okay now it is there and uh, so personality development especially in the young minds there are three aspects i was discussing one is the knowledge which most of the time we are getting from our books our teachers our society internet and everywhere knowledge is in plenty but skill give you the opportunity to do the things and how to do the thing is important and for this we we have been the center of knowledge since our vedic and pre vedic times but of the late you will agree with me that modern developments and modern uh, progress we have missed and you see there were industrial development and industrial era after 1865 to about 100 years and during this period we missed the bus because uh, we were under the british colonial era and very little focus was on the india's development rather they were focusing on the harnessing our resources our wealth and tapping its valuable uh, resources and transferring it to their countries you see whatever the development britishers have made in india during their tenure was railway posts and they were focused to harvest the natural resources and transport it to england then came the information era and luckily we got free during this era before just before this era and this era was the information era when passing the information was very fast radio was invented television came phones mobile phones and internet these are the information era progress now coming to this next era which we are progressing is knowledge era and this is a very important era earlier india used to be the vishwa guru and uh, they say that we were the seat of the knowledge and we were the supplier of all the philosophy and other thing in this knowledge era and there is a prediction that in future there will be leadership era and whole world will be following the person or the countries which are having the leadership qualities and those who are having the visions followers and other to uh, to solve the crisis and uh, progress now coming to the next to rule any country or to have an impressive career in this uh, uh, 
this uh, in the world you have to be very 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 uh, very very uh, in these three aspects you have to focus on you can be powerful when you are, your economy is very powerful like japan they have very strong economy you you can be powerful by the military power and military power many countries along with the economy military power like you see us and um, uh, this italy they are growing very very well and then knowledge era now in knowledge era and knowledge power you have the publication you have the patents you have the copyrights and for any development any technology progress or any business you have to pay the royalty for that virtually nowadays if you realize everything is governed by the knowledge and whatever you are using whether you are using perfume you are using any food there is any you are air travel or medicines there is knowledge component in it and you are being paid for that you are paying for that patents because the person who is commercializing it is taken a patent and that patent is given the technology and that technology is producing in the bulk stage and it is coming to your table and you are paying price for that so how powerful knowledge is you can't imagine and you are paying tax for that if you look we have to review our situation and how we are progressing and what are the challenges before the indian students indian faculty members indian academia or indian institutions we have to see in this slide you see university of california has yielded more than 42 nobel prize you see one institution is having 42 nobel prize winner nobel laureates and in our country the situation is not so good and secondly this university of uh, university of california is surrounded by more than 20 multinational companies now you should think why the multinational companies are coming so close so surroundings of this university of california this is simply because they want to be the close with the seat of innovation they want to be close with the seat of publication they want to be close with the faculty members and researchers of the university because they are giving lot of uh, solution and innovations which can lead to their business development Universities in the US largely shifted to product oriented research rather than theoretical research or future research where we are lacking. Most of our research are of no use or it can be used very, very late. So having a good research is required for the progress and knowledge development. US is the leading country in the economy. There is no denying. And if you look our, look our neighbor China, he is following closely about the US and he is following the same path of the world economy, patenting and publications. Our neighboring countries, other small countries like Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Malaysia, they are also very, very careful and they are progressing very, very focused direction. So we need to think and they are focusing on public-private partnership. Most of our institutions are Ekla chalore means move alone. Only alone movement cannot give the progress. And we have to collaborate with all these things, whether we are working for the pharma industry, whether we are working for the farmers, we are working for the students or anybody. The invention and then their absorption, then their commercialization, and then large scale, scaling of the product or the solutions need the partnership and network development and public private partnership we have to think on and then we have to progress on this there is a very interesting article i wanted to highlight to all young minds and all the faculty members new scientist is a very prestigious journal and published at the global level nature and new scientists are one of the top journals of the global level and they have assessed indian talents and they have predicted that India could be next generation, next uh, knowledge superpower. They have analyzed all our strengths and weaknesses also. But the major problem they have highlighted the quality of education and research in numbers, 
number of institutions, number of faculty faculties, number of projects, number of students. We are leading the world. But when it comes to the quality of research publication, quality in the our technology and patents, we are lagging behind. They say that more than 73% of our graduates are unemployable. Means 73% of the graduates cannot be useful because they don't have adequate knowledge and more importantly, they are not skillful. I will give one example. A BSc AG student having 20 subjects read in last four years, but once he passed out, he can't do us independently any one job, whether it is grafting or seed production or uh, greenhouse repair or post harvest management or even uh, this pesticides uh, and the soil testing or water testing. So we have to develop and we have to focus the skill development and how by the practical knowledge, by the giving them opportunity, how they can do the work. And that is the skill development. So <coughs> we can be a next knowledge superpower in the world, provided we improve our quality education and research. And these are the some concern area. You now see, see our Indian and global knowledge hub and how we are strengthening what are our strong points. I'm, I'm clear to all of you some, uh, are you getting my voice clearly? And slides are okay? Yes, sir, clear, everything very clear. Okay. We have more than 600 million population below the age of 26 means we have a very young population, long tradition of education we have. English being the second language is also a very strong point for India because we can communicate globally with all the countries because at the global level, English can be the link language. And you see the, our educational institutions, what used to be in... Uh, 1947 when we got independence there were hardly 25 universities five iits and 20 regional engineering institutions bhu got established in 1916. now in 2020 we have more than 750 universities and 339,000 colleges all around the country we have the third largest education system 93 percent technical education has gone in the private hands and 2,500 engineering college with 20 million seats, we have that. So this number wise, we are progressing very fast. We have infrastructure, we have capability, but we have to focus on our quality education and research. 20% graduates in India are only employable because they know how to do work after the graduation. So we have to focus on this so that Every graduate know what to do, at least one skill, one job he can perform independently. That should be the focus of the young minds also. I will say, once you complete all the courses, you should do and you should pick up one area where you can develop your personality and you can say in the interview board or in any institution or any interview that you can do one job, whether water testing or seed production or pesticides or repair job, or soil testing or grafting budding or any kind of thing, you can do one specific job. You are have the expertise on that. Out of 20 courses, you can be master of one aspect and that you can do independently or marketing, whatever the case. When National Knowledge Network, we are progressing and Skill Development Foundation has come to that. Now coming to that, as I discussed earlier, Patents and publication are the main source of the knowledge. Once why we publish, we publish to show the world that this is the knowledge, this is the new thing, I have done it and you can utilize it. If your publication doesn't be useful to anybody, it has no meaning. So we have to focus on the publications, those who are, those publications which can resolve, which can solve any problem. If your publication is not addressed to a problem, then your publication is of no use. So first, for having any publication, for any patent, I will come to patent later on. But the publication is one communication, one written communication, where you give 
what you have what was the problem and how you have done it and what you have achieved how you have resolved the problem that can be seed germination problem that can be pollination problem that can be pest problem that can be yield problem that can be nutrition problem quality problem or any problem but you have to choose really a really a very very carefully a problem which is disturbing the your customer customer when i say customer who uses your technology who can use your publication so you have to focus on customer you can identify the problem and then you can go for the publication and then do research and research outcome is the publication similarly once patent is done patent is non disclosure of your technology or innovations or novelty which earlier nobody has done and that has the commercial application that is the patent and in this aspect you see us is more than 26% they are they have the share in the world market they are the leading patent holder of all the commercial technologies that's why they are getting maximum maximum royalty china is also heading very fast 9.4% patents they have india contributes hardly 2.5% we are the third largest network in the research and education but our share is a very very low only 1% of our publication got high impact generally means quality of our publication like our education publication is a very very serious issue and we have to solve that 80% publications are from the premier institutions of the country like in the institute of science or iits so 20% publication other institutions hundreds and hundreds of institutions covers only 20% of publications so we have to give emphasis on this and this mind mentoring young mind is a really really good initiative at least ysr horticulture university can give the boost in the publication 50% of the chinese patents by locals whereas in our country more than 30 one third of patents are ours two thirds are done by the company multinational companies and other outsiders they patent in india they have the right and if you want to develop anything for the commercial purpose you have to buy the patents and you have to pay the royalty also us south korea china are the top rank south korea is coming very very fast in this then india ranks 52 per million patent holders very low out of 350 patents 150 from an institute of science and iit so even in agriculture and horticulture that patenting is very slow we have to give emphasis on that and i will tell how we can go about that top institutions 30 to 40 percent institutions are in india we don't have even in top 200 or top 300 so i will skip that slide i don't want to waste and status academy and academy uh, industry and academy are linkages you develop any technology you have new variety new seeds but you can't produce in tons and tons you can't produce in lakhs plants you develop a variety you develop a fruit crops or flower crops you have to develop middleman or a large scale producer that is called industry which can multiply it with your support with your uh, monitoring and they can reach to the farmers and then only we can progress and your technology your publication your patent can be useful so here you see us is ranking first uk is ranking ninth south korea 12th and we are we are at 43 level means our linkages to industries are very poor that's why our knowledge our patents our technologies are not coming going to the farmers then we for a quality project or quality publication you have to go for research planning guidelines for evaluating research quality well defined questions i tell you till the time you don't have any problem or question you can't go for a research if you have not done proper research or data then you can't have a good publication description of the context and existing information what is the prior art that's why we do a rigorous review in this aspect you identify a topic you define your objective and you will see what past knowledge is available and then only you can design your technical program and synopsis and the various aspect what are the aspect which can influence your research aspect 
whether your chemicals, your instrument, your raw material, your environment, your temperature, facilities, or so many aspects you can think about depending on the uh, trial you are conducting. And then you have to create the data. And the most important thing nowadays in research ethics, it has come, that is evidences, photographs, and uh, this processing results. If you don't have evidences, many publications, if you go for a scopus, they ask you raw data. What are the instruments you have used? How you have analyzed? And what are their reading and printouts? What are the models? What are the chemicals you have used? So evidences are very, very important. And then your discussion part, critical assumptions, and what are the similar findings, what are the contradiction findings we discuss. But we hardly discuss how and why this result is going coming like that. Then conclusion, drawing what is the final outcome of the research that is very important in your research and publication. Then supporting references, original source, and then you have to go for your critic, peer critic, so many, two, three peer review, and then your quality research publication will get increased. There is a saying that good research is not only the judgment. Most of the time, what we decide and we, we conclude. Before doing the research, we are clear about the findings. Then it is only validation. It is not the quality research. Once you have so many options, you have a variety of treatments, and then only you can see what is the best result? Then coming to the process of an effective research, you see, first you have to review the objectives. What are the problems? You identify the research problem. The biggest problem is we are not pro uh, identifying a problem. And before with the problem, you go for the objectives and review. You have a rigorous review and define the objectives and then judging the strength and weakness of your design. And then you apply all the plan and then have synopsis, statistical design, what are the chemicals, instruments, field conditions, environmental conditions, and what are the ecological conditions can affect the uh, your research plan, you should be done. And then the latest model and tools are coming. You have to use that. Then you have to generate the data, collect the data, analyze the data, and it is coming to the research report, research publications, and patents. Now, there is a missing link, which I want to highlight. Once you have done the research, its effectiveness, its repeatability should be there. You can't say that I have done that, I have achieved result, and anybody else is trying, and that is not repeatable, he is not achieving the similar result, then your research is quite uh, questionable. You have that repeatability will be there, and then you have to demonstrate your technologies at pilot scale. Means the first frontline demonstration, what we call in the KV case, that is for that front technology demonstration. Once it is done, then it can go for the technology transfer for the mass scale and marketing and legal issues. And then you can always work on once you have done it. Then you can redefine your technology, re refine your technology. It doesn't mean the technology you have developed 10 years back will work will today also with the development of new chemicals, equipments, another thing. You can refinement is also required. So you have to keep doing this kind of work. Hope I'm coming uh, clearly to you all of you. And uh, it's uh, I need some feedback uh, on this before uh, progressing on some other aspects. Is it clear, ma'am? Surya, ma'am? Anybody? Yes, anybody? Yes, sir. It's clear, sir. Okay, okay. Now I'm coming to third phase of presentation. And uh, how much time I have, ma'am? You can take any, any time, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. So now major stages for research publications. Any research publication, I told, as I told you, is outcome of a research plan or research uh, findings. Research publication is you are having a, some, you have done some research, you have some innovations and trial, you have some data, you have some evidences, and you want to publish this so that it can be known to your network or those who wanted to know this. 
So research planning and synopsis, I have already discussed, very important and valid question, valid problem you have to identify. You have to identify the objectives and then make the synopsis. Synopsis means complete plan. What were, how many treatments, how many replications, what are the methods we will be using, how the chemicals will come, how instrument will be used, what will be the timeline, what will be the cost requirement. So complete planning and synopsis work you have to do, whether it is thesis research or some project research or your personal research, you have to do maximum and very careful planning. And those who have done research, you can take help in this. If you do wrong planning or you are not clear about your synopsis, how observation will be taken, what will be the uh, units and uh, what will be the other uh, technological requirement, you will be failing in the conducting the research. And then you have to conduct the research. And the main purpose of conducting the research that you are trying various options, various treatment, and you have to collect the performance and feedback and data and observation. Many times you don't see the data, but you have some observation, visual observations. You have to click the photographs. You have to observe it. You have to record the videos. You have to give the, uh, even the instruments, readings and their uh, graphs and evidences. These are the evidences that is required in the quality publication. Simply saying that you have done it doesn't mean simply showing a numerical numbers it will not solve the purpose. That's why in the thesis, we put a lot of photographs, even the candidate who is doing layout of the experiments. So these are the evidences. You prove that you are very strong and you are doing it properly. Then processing of data, statistical analysis of the data, you all know that, and that is very important. That's why you can say that there's difference with the data and the recommendation formulation is a very important. What data saying, the main job of the scientist, in my opinion, is research planning and formulation of the recommendation. In between the conduct of research, collection of the data, evidences and processing of data, anybody can, any technical staff can do it. Others can do it. But the research planning and processing the data and formulating the recommendations, what you have achieved is a very important thing. And that you analytical power, all young minds should develop that. And that is the scientific attitude. When you have to go for the research publication, then you can give the recommendation. And if possible, on that line, you can also suggest some future directions for the research. In this area, what you can't do any complete thing in one go. So you can suggest what are the future requirement, how the future researcher can go and what are the areas or what are the uh, tips you can suggest that. Then type of articles most of the time, many times I am an editor of a journal called Progressive Horticulture and this journal is published since 1969 as Madam told and you go, go on the website and you see we have completed more than 55 articles, 55 volumes and we publish in June and December every year. So I request all of you, those who are interested in uh, uh, publishing, so they can also join. But many times young minds and young students send the review articles. They are not aware about the, what type of articles are there. So I am here to clarify research articles based on your project research or research aspects, which has the fresh data, primary data. It is called research articles. Then review articles is kind of review what all has been done. A person who has devoted 15, 20, 30 years or life in the, that aspect, he can write the review. No other else, nobody else should write review. Review should be written by an expert who has devoted ample time in his respective field and he is master in that field. He will give overall review at the global level or national level and the future directions also. What are the lacunas? What are the achievements? And how to go about that? Whenever you are going for any trials, any aspect or any crop, you should find the review articles on that aspect. Then you can do a very good research. So review articles, we publish one review article in each issue and that review articles for the future researchers and that is a very, very important paper. Then short note, you have not done a complete research trials, but you have a little data, you have some observation, 
very unique observation, then you can go for the short uh, notes. You have not validated your data twice or one year data is there. Normally we validate when open environment is there, when there is influence of temperature, rain, fall or soil or location, then we go for repetition of the data, at least two years data. But in short note, you can go for the smaller research and three, four articles of short note we publish. Or we can, short communication is also one term. If you go for the current science, whatever the, your idea or your uh, thinking is there, very small idea can be communicated, scientific communication or short communication. This kind of thing is not available in my journal, but uh, current science is encouraging this kind of uh, thing. Then case study. Somebody has done a good, uh, set up a good industry or he is a role model farmer or orchardist or floriculturist or post-harvest technologist or industry. So you can go to him, collect this data and then you can prepare the case studies. We are encouraging the case studies because they are the living lizards. They are the living examples. They have made the dream reality. They have adopted the, adopted the technologies and they have been successful. So case studies you can prepare and then concept paper again the future concept and new concept chat GPT AI or whatever the new concepts are coming or even in your field you can go for that. So these are the some types of articles you can do now coming to the Scopus index journal. The main topic was that how to publish in the Scopus index journal. First, we should know what is Scopus. It is nothing but a database. Elsevier is a leading publication publisher and Scopus, they have created a database of abstract and citations database in 2004. It covers more than 33, uh, this 11,000 public publishers and 36,000 titles and 34,000 peer reviewed journals all from the globes. And they do it very, very, those who are high quality review, they ensure that, then they calculate H index, H is small, then CITO score, then SJR, SNIP, and they, they evaluate then what is your impact factor and that, so those who are having high impact, uh, that, that, they, 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 that is calculated. The control of predatory genders, number of false societies and unethical works is being done by the societies. They are not uh, following the proper norms and they are doing a lot of fraud in publications. They are giving a lot of uh, uh, unwanted activities, which is uh, they are blacklisted by the NAS or UGC or at the global level. One should be very, very careful while going for the publications. You should be sure about the credential of the journal whether it is proper or they are taking some time in the name of publication charges, they are charging huge money, huge money. And that is the main problem. It has going a bad business and growing. They are spoiling the names, not only of the country, but the science also. So these are the unhealthy practices we have to avoid. And you have to focus on those on the credential of the general and committee and that thing. While writing a research articles, why our research articles are accepted or rejected, I'm going to address this. Know why we are writing. First, you have to focus what you want to convey. What is your major achievement? And that you want to convey to your audience or your customer. So you have to be clear. You have to be focused on that. Then your title should not be very generic. That's why we got some time. You are writing a very good article. But the title and keywords are matching with others, whereas it's a general topic. You have to be very focused, whether it is you have done some nobody say this is uh, in Telangana region, the uh, effect of the evaluation of gladiolus variety in Telangana region. You have done in one district, you have done in one type of soil. So what you write entire Telangana or you are not uh, having so that creates some time duplicacy. So you have to be very, very careful in defining the titles and keywords. You have to be very focused and keywords are that dirt throughout the world, throughout the world, your publication, how it can be traced out. Somebody put the crop name 
or your technology, what you have you adapted, or reasons, or whatever the outcome is there, you must put the, these things in your keywords. So four, five, six keywords should be related so that anybody putting this keyword in Google or library search or any uh, past reviews, so your article should appear. Then explain about the research problem, why objective was there and the justification. Then updated review. Many people are writing the statistical analysis of 1969. Oh, so many books have appeared now. So many books and technologies are appeared. But you are mentioning 1950s book, 1960 book for the same technology which new has come. If some concept is old, some method is old, you can write there is no harm. But you have a, you should have a mix uh, update review latest to the end, uh, old one. And that should be the relevant. Too many or too less. Three, sometimes people write one article with three, two or three uh, uh, references. That is not good. And so some people write more than 50, 60 references. That is also too much. You have to be very focused, very clear and relate. Sometimes when references are lacking, then related reference, related crop you can choose. Once you are focusing on uh, general reference, no, references are very high, then you have to be very critical and very focused on number of references and usefulness of references. The clarity of material methods, you must mention where you have done, what were the weather condition. Sometimes chemicals also affect uh, repeatability. You have used laboratory reagents or laboratory grade chemicals. Somebody has analytical grade chemical, chemicals, purities. Many research findings and many researchers mention the name, brand name of the chemicals also. Sometimes it is avoided because of the publicity stunt. So we have to so what methodology measurement of uh, any plant with the uh, scale is a different than vernier calipers with the difference. The laser guided uh, torch is different. So what technology you have used because the accuracy will matter. You balance digital balance, the accuracy one digit, two digit will also affect your research finding. So you have to very, very clear in research and methodology. New methods have come. So you have to use new tools and methods and results and discussion with justification. Most of the time we say that this is in conformity with uh, Rao and uh, Rai and uh, this kind of thing that they have also reported. So we are also doing. This is the secondary point. You have to go against them also. There is no denying. Every time in science, there is no that you have to support anybody or whatever others have said is right. Many times contradiction gives the new results. So, but you have to give the logic why your result is different from that result. So that is important. Support the data, pictures, evidences I have already earlier said. Then clear recommendation. Last two lines, you have to give the recommendation of your data and uh, that uh, paper and how it is useful. Acknowledgement. Many times in thesis and uh, research paper also, we start acknowledging so many unrelated people. This acknowledgement is not to your vote of thanks for uh, all things. Only those who have contributed directly or indirectly in your papers and projects should be acknowledged. It is not that unrelated people and so those who acknowledgement should be very professional, whether it is thesis or research papers. Uh, we have to be very careful. And the references, all references, those who are seen or not seen, and their pattern of writing is different. So you must see what pattern your university is following in thesis writing or what pattern your journal is writing. So you have to follow that one. Otherwise, if you don't follow that pattern, then your article may not be considered or liable to be rejected. Then common errors. What are the common errors? Most of the time, we don't bother about the format of the journal. Before, once you decided to publish any article, then you have to find a journal, a credential of the journal, and then format of the journal. What are, read the guidelines, see their papers, and accordingly, you have to provide, especially the tables, figures, and references. That should be very, very carefully, you have to write and publish. Then take the help of your uh, colleagues, and uh, critical reviews, grammatical errors, designing clarity of the sentences and para, and you have to do it. Then publication ethics and publication policies. Every journal has the publication policy. 
you have to go through it and you have to see that what are the thing is there then nowadays most of the people are plagiarism check or doi there is a digital object identifier and your if it is copied from somewhere or you have not done it properly you have not written it properly you will be got hold of that and then most of the time many senior people are penalized for this so you have to avoid this once you are serving and you got uh, this caught in this copying and plagiarism of the journals then this is a misconduct and you can be penalized for this so be careful this is a very very challenging nowadays you can't copy even your own work i will tell you authors and co-authors you it is not as your wish that to whom you will include your team should be clear and the credit of the authors and co-author should be decided with the team and everybody should know his share his or her share and their sequence who is the communicating author who is the senior author and these are the very important phenomena uh, this practice and you have to be discuss all these things unrelated people who are those who have not uh, Though those who have not contributed by any means should not be included. These are the general ethics, and otherwise it creates controversy. And this is also the cheating kind of uh, thing in front. Ambiguity. You have to be clear in each sentence what you want to say, and the figures, the reference tables should be there. And some most of the time, references, table, and figures create. data is mismatching format is not proper that's why they, they reject your work or they sometimes they don't reject they do not understand what you want to convey so be clear in that then review review before submission you yourself can review your head of department can review your colleague can review and give your paper to other people He, they will write, read and they will understand those who have no the language editing is one aspect technical aspect is uh, the the concept editing and technical aspect is another and then format editing these are three aspects and comments are referee whenever you receive the comments you have to be follow and understand and then do it then legal aspect is there whenever you have published any book you have the copyright or booklet and other thing so or you are quoting somebody you have to see that you have due permission sometime you copy the photographs or graphs or other thing but the copyright is for other person then patents patent patent holders are there and with their consent only you can use it so patent holders they allow you and they give the agreement with you and that uh, that should be taken care of then intellectual property right these two are part of intellectual property right but the person who has designed the work or the person who has developed the synopsis it is the ipr of that person so he is the leading researcher in thesis sometime this kind of problem comes a guide is changed so once guide is changed you ideally you have to change the topic also the guide who has designed the topic develop the synopsis is his ipr and we have to respect individuals ipr so these are the ipr issues and that can lead to the legal uh, aspect and that can pose problem in that then technology transfer if you don't have the technology you are not the custodian of the technology you are not the patent holder of the technology you can't use that technology otherwise they you can be uh should should for it and that uh, law of the land is also important many time law of the land and social issues uh, the, like opium opium is a very good uh, medicinal crop but you can't use it because law of the land doesn't uh, provide it without licensing you can't do any research similarly so many endangered plants are there red book listed plants medicinal plants and there you are going for the survey or collection or animals are there so you can't touch them without the prior permission of the custodian or without you have to ensure you have to take proper permission otherwise you can be in trouble then publication ethics these are the not the mandatory things but most of the time publication ethics we are getting caught in that rules these are ethics are the rules conduct rules followed by in scientific publications these are your uh, conduct your behavior 
while going for the scientific publication. You have to take due approval uh, of your project director or leaders or head of department or whatever the policies of that institution. You have to take proper approval, consent of all authors. And they have to be informed whether here or there. Sometimes people write the name of those who are not, uh, they, they are no more. They have lost their life. But ethics says you have to mention there as authorship because they have contributed. It is not for your scorecard. It is not for your publication, publication uh, this promotion. Publication is entirely giving the credit of work. And those who have contributed must be given this work. And this is a good ethics, whether he has been transferred or she has been transferred, he is there or not there, she is no more or dead or alive. You have to give the due credit in their proportion. And that is the informed and consent and confidentiality again. If you are co-author of some journals or some papers, you can't share this to anybody, anybody any, till the time it is published because that could lead to some commercial aspect of also. So you can't lead uh, this, you can't leak the information or share that same pictures and data with anybody. So confidentiality is also very good ethics. Data manipulation and research fraud, it's very common. I need not to give more emphasis on that because this is there and plagiarism, I told you. Then simultaneous nowadays, many times we are facing this problem. Uh, author submit this paper two or three places and at the last phase he withdraw his face because it has been published. So simultaneous submission or duplication of the publication is a serious issue. You have to avoid that. Self citation is also to be avoided. Citation is for others. If you are uh, using your own research work and then you can where necessary, you can do it, but unnecessarily self-citation is an unhealthy practice in ethics. Then ethics in authorship, those who are unrelated just because his your niece or friend or uh, son or daughter, many people have done it and they have been highlighted and negatively it has affected. So authorship ethics and conflict of interest. Suppose you are doing something, it should not be interested and uh, conflict of interest is affecting your uh, publication also. Since he is your colleague or you don't want him to progress, you can't reject his paper or you can't give him bad comments or you want to promote someone, his paper is not up to the mark and just promote uh, that. So that uh, is also conflict of or he is related to you, you have received his publication and without checking the quality and doing proper review, you are publishing. So those who are related to you, and you are promote, uh, affecting or they, they, they are, uh, uh, you are uh, encouraging them, it is also very unhealthy practice. The major concern, we are publishing a lot of papers. This is my last slides and I'm here to highlight my own opinion, but hardly 1% of our research are being used. Why? Because we don't know the problems. And our recommendations are very obvious. Nobody is using that. That is the waste of time, talent and resources. So novelty is not there. So you have to do good research and you have to publish a good research paper which can be used by somebody. Then only your paper will be valuable. That will be good publication. And any general will accept that. Routine type of work, routine type which is already prevailing in the market, which is any uh, thing is available in the market or uh, open domain, you can't do again and again. Reinvention of field wheel is not the good practice. Then reproducible result means whatever you have achieved, whatever you have uh, uh, recommended should be adopted by others also. They should be able to gain the same knowledge or same results as you have achieved. So that is there. Then citation and impact factors will go high once it is novel, new area is there and results are reproducible. Then only it will be the commercially viable and it go for the large scale multiplication. Then modern tools. Sometimes modern tools are good also. Sometimes they are affecting adversely also. Most of many times, many AI tools or chat GPT, 
the people are not using their own brain or analysis and they are creating research papers or knowledge or articles or publications from the Googles and chat GPT. That is a major challenge. Whereas the use of the computers and their other AI knowledge to see their impact and other data analysis, that is desirable. Indigenous publication. You see, nowadays publication has become a business. Many countries, and I will not name, but uh, they have made the business open access, publication charges, and so many new trend is coming, consultancy services. They are giving, outsourcing the publication and they will publish in high impact general. These are the things. If we have to go challenge, meet the challenges, we have to encourage indigenous publication. New challenge is there, your publication has the value. If your novelty is there, some uh, worth uh, technology is there, it will be cited all over the globe. People will be using. And then only our indigenous journals, our indigenous publication will grow. Every time China, what China has done, most of their publication are is Chinese language. Hardly English. Then though only abstract in, is in English. So those who want Chinese publication, they get it translated. So their translators are getting business. Similarly, Japan is doing, French is doing, Germany is doing. But if we Indians, our majority of publications are outside, good publications are outside. We are hardly giving emphasis to our indigenous journal. We have a lot of indigenous good journals. And mostly we are preparing in English. So openly it is not giving new business translating in. So we have to formulate our regional language for the farmers. If somebody is Telugu writing in Telugu and it is worth some keyword, some abstract should be in English so that they can trace it out. Then they will go for the translation. It will create a new business. This is the approach of others are doing, but we are lagging behind and that will create the business. Chanakya, very before 350 BC, they have said that before starting any kind of work, I apply it to research work. Why I am doing it? What the result might be? And will I be, will I be successful? Means, will it be worth for anybody else or will somebody use it? If it is not useful, don't start a new research which is not worth uh, applicable or which is not useful to others. Once you start working on someone with determination, don't be afraid of failure. Don't uh, mind the people's comment. That's why it's walk sincerely and be fierce. And you see the Charles Darwin very, very, very clearly said, it is not the strongest species that survive, not the most intelligent one. But those who are responsive to change, they are the survival for the fittest. Human being is surviving and progressing and uh, developing is not because they are the strongest one. Many animals are more stronger than the human beings. It is not because we have the super brains. Many organisms have the IQ level is much higher than the human beings. But we know how to adopt the change and how to responsive to be change to change. Then only we are staying from the high altitude to sea and below sea level. Any environment, any kind of climate, any kind of uh, location, human beings and beast, all the changing environment we have adopted. And that's why we are progressing. And with these words, I thank you again to all of you for giving me this opportunity and uh, sharing my thoughts on these aspects. Once again, I'm grateful to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. T. Janki Ram, sir, and uh, Dr. Surya, madam, for uh, this wonderful opportunity. And I must appreciate, sir, for this noble starting, igniting, mentoring young mind, this is the one thing which we will not be able to get anywhere, whether it is Google or uh, classroom or books. This kind of initiative will certainly enrich the young minds for the future challenges. Thank you so much, sir. I can start some discussion if required, sir. Yeah. Uh... Unmute you, sir. Unmute. Okay, sir.
Can this start the interaction? Students can somebody if you have some queries, some doubts regarding uh, the wonderful lecture which Juvedi uh, sir, Juvedi ji has given us about all uh, the pathways of navigating to Scopus Index journals. Please. Can you start from somewhere? College of Horticulture, Venkatramana Gudem? Or. Uh, Till the time they prepare a lecture, I will give something about my society, sir. Sir. We, uh, we welcome sure. uh, because, sir, also uh, told me for this, this Indian Society of Horticulture Research Development. We have associated with, uh, with some last, I think, uh, 15, 20 years I was associated with that. And this society was established in 1969 at Chobatia Uttarakhand, Hill Development Horticulture Development Board, Hill Horticulture Development Board. And um, since then, Progressive Horticulture was uh, started publish publishing and 55 volumes we have uh, completed. And Honorable Vice Chancellor is our mentor in that, and he's uh, uh, in the, our executive body also. And time to time, he gives uh, and support us largely for this mission. And we are the second la oldest after Indian Society of Horticulture. And uh, this journal has completed 55 volumes. Apart from the publication of journals, we have a lot of awards. And uh, your worthy Vice Chancellor is one of the prestigious award, leadership award uh, recognition we had uh, given in the Pantanagar. Then we every alternate year we organize progressive horticulture conclave where there is a separate session for the young minds. We give them a lot of students. More than 70% of participants in our conclave is students. And uh, their thesis research, MSc and PhD thesis research presentation you made and we give the best thesis award. And this year in Nausari also, from your university, a very talented uh, lady got back the best budding scientist award on the thesis research. Then number of awards for the KVK teachers award and uh, this leadership awards and fellows and technology transfer award. These kind of awards are also there. Then online talk. If you go to YouTube and hot talk during Corona period, more than 64 kind of unique and lead speakers are there and very important talks are there. I will request all the students to go and visit the hot talks and uh, very important. The, I remember the day uh, Dr. Janki Ramsar was online on Facebook and hot talk and it was the time when hardly a few talks were there and within three days he was shifted from Delhi to uh, this uh, YSR University and we feel privileged uh, on that day. So you listen all the lead speakers of the country on the hot talk and uh, then uh, the these are the some activities we do through the society we try to encourage and nurture young minds and try to associate them through youtube facebook and whatsapp also so please join us those who are in an email and website is there progressive horticulture.in www so everything is available there so again anybody any question clarification Comment, please. Anybody? Good evening, sir. Yes. I'm Dr. Madhvi, sir, Associate Dean, College of Horticulture, Venkatramana Gudem, sir. Uh, Good evening, ma'am. Yeah. Sir, uh, thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful, effective, and informative talk given and letting the students as well as the staff who are under, undertaking their research here, sir. And also, as you said, sir, uh, first of all, uh, the Chanakya quotes, uh, what the three points you have given is true, sir. Uh, just uh, for uh, acquiring the degree or this uh, for academic, completing the academic purpose, uh, we should not focus on research. Uh, the prime idea uh, it should be uh, like uh, need-based and quality research. So for that, what are the ways to choose and also to conduct the research uh, for giving us the direction, sir? Um, and the other thing is uh, uh, the public-private partnership also, sir, as you said. Uh, because uh, once we conduct the research, the outcome 
how it should be you have uh, given us sir uh, it should be a skill oriented or uh, the skill development should be there then only automatically we can get the patents also so thank you so much sir for giving us uh, this informative lecture now i request some of the students uh, to come and interact and uh, take up this uh, that opportunity now i request the students anybody you can read out the question or you can help them any clarification any point which is not clear to you whatever i have discussed because i was one way and i was not getting feedback so you can ask i feel they are reluctant or hesitant about that yeah no problem i think uh, no questions then uh, okay i think uh, dr dwedi ji at the outset uh, uh, greetings from dr ysr horticultural university which is accredited with uh, grade a great sir by icar great sir and uh, second of its kind uh, in the country great sir and, uh, on my own behalf and the university dr ysr horticulture university uh really thankful to you for accepting uh, our invitation and uh, really it's our privilege to have you as uh, the first speaker i am honored sir I and honored. Uh, and uh, among the few initiatives that uh, we are taking at the university and uh, i would like to mention here that one of the initiatives to make our uh, students and scientists and teachers to have more uh, interaction and connectivity collaboration with even uh, the scientists from abroad we started series of lectures called global connect so far we had the the international repute speakers from various countries us australia sri lanka and uh, other countries more than uh, i think 15 experts have given delivered the lectures and this is one such kind of uh, initiative that today we started that is mentoring and minds even it was discussed in the recently held the vice chancellors conference that it is always to have mentors whether it is students or the scientists particularly those who joined the service fresh we need to have such kind of initiatives and in that direction we started this initiative today and uh, really your uh, talk particularly navigating the pathways of research publications in scopus index journals because now this has become very important uh, the publications research publications whether we talk about the ranking whether it is national or international level or the quality of research conducted at the institutions 
the research publications are the reflections of the research so i think in this direction now in our university we will be taking uh, necessary steps to strengthen more particularly the pg research which will give the, the very quality publications patents and technologies i think uh, your talk really covered uh, many dimensions of the today's uh, topic and as you mentioned particularly for ranking the scopus index journals are very important the h index and of course uh, you have also brought about uh, various aspects of the research articles review articles short notes and uh, case studies even i think we need to as uh, it was mentioned by our ad college of horticulture venkatraman gudem even the public private partnership also bring and collaborate for a meaningful research and today we also need to talk about the research publications which are of with the farmer participatory research for example our vijayarai station has done wonderful work and they have come out with uh, many clonal selections in kokova this is one example and i think we need to think in those dimensions also and of course uh, always <coughs> you have also uh, particularly mentioned about the ethics and the policy of the publications and in those lines we are also going to issue some of the guidelines for the publication i think uh, it is also important because i know you are uh, leading one of the very vibrant societies which are striving for the research and development of horticulture in our country and the journal which you are bringing the progressive horticulture i know it is highly rated and a peer reviewed journal and uh, which is very popular i think uh, it started in 1969 also you mentioned and uh, this is one thing our students and staff need to publish in such kind of mass rated journals sometimes we find you know just for the name sake we send it most of our even good research articles for want of publication we publish them in online journals by paying huge amounts i think in that direction this is one series where we would like to connect our scientists and students to publish in good journals and you also brought uh, the guidelines i think uh, definitely today's uh, 
your talk will definitely inspire our students and teachers and this will go a long way and uh, thank you so much once again dr divedi ji and i know dr divedi for the past uh, 25 years because we have commonality dr divedi is working for drdo now presently is the director personal in drdo and he was also director of one of the defense laboratories in tejpur and i was also part of drdo for one year when i was working for the defense yes, laboratory yes. jodhpur yeah. and uh, from those days we know each other and definitely though i think uh, madam might have introduced your biodata but one thing i would like to mention here your contributions are well received and appreciated at national level during your work at high altitude research laboratory at ladakh and particularly padma shri dr brahm singh ji when you worked with him for uh, the popularizing of uh, sibaktar which was very neglected crop and which was uh, brought to the poor front and uh, i know how the farmers got benefited and particularly your contribution in protective cultivation is also well appreciated i think today it's a great honor for uh, us to have you on this platform and uh, give a kick start to this uh, mentoring and minds and uh, i appreciate dr suryakumar pg dean and all our uh, esteemed university officers dr salomi sinita uh, the dean of students affairs our registrar dr b sinwas garu our dean dr padmatham garu our controller of examinations dr swami garu and uh, all other uh, colleagues and the associate deans of colleges for uh, taking this lead and definitely in coming uh, lectures in this series definitely we can see a lot of change in our uh, quality of publications and also i thank you for recognizing some of our uh, young scientists definitely it will help them to perform well in their career and it will be encouragement and definitely we will keep in touch so with this few remarks i once again thank you for uh, accepting our invitation thank you very much thank you sir it's my honor to be here and thank you for the opportunity thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir i also uh, thank our uh, honorable vice chancellor sir for his always his constant guidance and always his extended support in directing the pg research also, uh, in the university in right direction and as mentioned we had a great mentor as sir was saying at the national level and global level uh, our honorable vice chancellor was a mentor for many researchers at national and global research and we are so privileged and blessed that dr ysr h u also had a great mentor for us for mentoring our uh, university ysr horticulture university and this program also was uh, was initiation and uh, uh, the uh, guidance of honorable vice chancellor sir uh, only to start this uh, series for um, 
this uh, the mentoring of young minds and in this now as uh, uh, this uh, lecture which 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 the which was a initial part one which was really useful uh, for mentoring our young minds with a rewarding regarding uh, rewarding experience we are very much thankful to you sir for navigating us uh, really to the right direction of how to get uh, published in the scopus index journals and uh, also this uh, webinar which was organized under our mentoring of young minds we are really uh, very thankful because uh, we had the first mentor very effective mentor first uh, for inspiring and guiding and supporting our young individuals as they navigate their personal and professional growth sir and uh, effective mentors like uh, uh, sanjay dwivedi sir uh, who are very empathetic patient and genuinely interested in the success of uh, mentees uh, we had a very great uh, experience and a chance sir thank you very much and uh, you provided us uh, a very safe space of how to get into the right direction and navigating to the uh, our research articles the research, difference of the research articles for the young minds and young people to explore their uh, interest thank you very much sir and um, once again um, uh, i request uh, all uh, my students uh, pg students or uh, faculty uh, to kindly interact uh, to kindly have uh, any questions any interaction regarding this uh, uh, the scopus index journals or the publications uh, regarding this kindly Yeah. is there anybody or we can is there anybody no okay sir so yeah. we, we will we'll have the form also a very good evening to one and all on behalf of dr ysr horticultural university <coughs> it's my pleasure and privilege to propose formal vote of thanks on this first webinar series on mentoring young minds at this juncture i take this opportunity to extend my deep sense of gratitude to the author creator and the dynamic force the right personality and chairman of today's program dr t janaki ram sir most respected honorable vice chancellor dr ysr horticultural university thank you very much sir for your noble vision innovation initiation and launching of this mentoring of young minds and this mentoring and igniting our student minds today to hit the target effectively and efficiently in future sharpening and brightening out their hidden quality for the future generation our heartfelt thanks to the great personality distinguished guest speaker dr sanjay k dwivedi sir director directorate of personal defense research and development organization drdo new delhi uh, with his vast experience in diverse areas of horticulture in india and around the world uh, delivering us a very wonderful lecture on navigating the pathways of research publications in scopus index journals uh, thank you very much sir for giving us the insights in spite of your busy schedules sharing us the importance of skill apart from knowledge and the personality development we need to have in the area of leadership and you enlightened us where do we lack where do we stand and how we have to move forward and uh, with collaboration public private partnership and the patents and publications or the visibility and quality and which are uh, disclosed uh by patenting and uh, you have enlightened us regarding the process of effective research refinement publications errors to avoid legal aspects and uh, uh, the ethics we need to follow and really this is an introspection of where do we stand and how we have to move forward towards the right publications doing a need based and uh, right research thank you very much sir for uh, sparing your valuable time and uh, enlightening all of us in the right direction and our sincere thanks to all our university officers dr as padmavatham madam dean of horticulture dr l narnaid sir director of research 
Dr. D. V. Swami, sir, controlled of examinations. Dr. V. Srinivas, sir, registrar. Dr. E. Karanasri, madam, director of extension, for their constant support. Uh, and our sincere thanks to Dr. S. Suryakumar Igaru, dean of PG studies. Dr. Vyasa Horticultural University, the convener of today's program, who orchestrated and coordinated the webinar uh, series. And I am also thankful to all the associate deans of the colleges, teaching staff from all the colleges. And thanks to uh, journal heads, heads of research stations, scientists, and uh, uh, my appreciation and thanks to all of our students who uh, got much benefited and who are the future generation. And uh, thanks to the supporting staff. Thank you one and all for your valuable and patient uh, presence. Thank you. Thanks to Madam. Thanks to Madam. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Divedi ji. Thank you, sir. And it has been a wonderful opportunity for me to interact young mind. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay.